So um, basically today, um, we'll basically be doing the introduction, introducing ourselves, introducing the, the course as we think. Uh, one of the, the plan which we're working on is um, probably to be having it one um, every week so that we can take the time after each lecture to be able to review uh, what we've done individually and be able to work on um, the set assignments that we'll be giving ourselves. Um, so, yes, yeah, so. Yeah, so um, today we'll be doing the introduction and and the the set goals that we're looking to achieving uh, with the whole research one on one is, as I said earlier, to be able to educate ourselves. And uh, for some of us who are already good at doing research, uh, be able to add more to our uh, knowledge, uh, be able to build on on our existing knowledge and everything, and uh, then to be able to to start an individual. Uh, research work. So, so the plan um, with that, that I see with this um, research one on one is initially for us to be able to be confident enough as individual to be able to pick research topics, to be able to do our literature reviews, to be able to do in depth um, um, data analysis and everything, and being able to take that individuality to come into a group and collaborate in, in, in doing research work and publishing it. That's one of the goals that we're looking to towards achieving, and um, you have to get the research paper published. So the course outline, um, basically, that we're going to be looking at, which is like um, some of the fundamental things that we need to know as individuals or as researchers when while doing research is. Um, um, is the introduction. Um, please, are you guys hearing me clearer now? You can just write it in the chat. Um, you guys yes. Are here. Oh. yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. So um, um, the course outline, um, the course outline was uh, kind of derived and, and brought up by the, the fundamental thing that as researchers, as proper researchers, we ought to know and ought to abide with while doing or conducting any research um, 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 at all. Um, the introduction is what I'm going to talk about today, just to brief the whole topic, and then plagiarism. Why plagiarism is the second thing after introduction? It's very, very, very important because once um, you do a research work and plagiarism is, is, is found in the research work, it's as good as, uh, it's as, good as not being published because um, big journal companies and all do go through that, and plagiarism is it's not authentic, it's not original. Um, being able to come up with an idea, a novel research work, and being able to follow it up, and uh, being able to, to organize your literature review to make sense out of it. Um, because one thing I notice a lot with most research works um, I get to edit and stuff like that is people copying and pasting. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't, um, research is not you not making use of resources, but copying what for one of those resources. It's, it's a big issue when it comes to the research and, and world. You can take, for instance, you have five paragraphs. You can take each paragraph, analyze it, and then you write it in your own words, and then reference um, on the paragraph or, or the book or the journal you got the research work from. So that's one thing we're going to like have to like um, look into and, and deal with the jargon. Then after that, and the third one is the ethics. Now when we do certain research work, especially the table research work or what some people call the lab work, um, lab research work. There are some ethics that need to be followed. Um, if if you are doing, for instance, in in, in the developed world, um, using animal as a subject research work, you have to go through certain um, um, protocol to be able to get um, the the whole research thing better. Um, if you have to use a human being as a research um, subject, you need to get the environment, the procedure, the methodology being used better. Um, I think in the, in, in the state is the, F, is the FDA or what they call it. So you need to go through all those process and, and that falls on that ethics. Then another thing being with the ethics is what's the morale behind it? Um, I think it was a research work that I, I think it was 2016, um, which I was following at the time that I think everything broke down was um, the head transplant. Now, 
now that was like a novel thing that was a big thing to me like doing a head transplant like how was that like realistic and stuff like that i felt it was something that could have been um, um achieved that the ethical aspect of it became the issue so we were going to talk about um, the ethics and, and uh, things surrounding that then structuring paper work um now this going into the paper the the, the writing part of the paper work itself um we have to talk about the topic um the hypothesis now your topic has to be the right the hypothesis now what's the hypothesis so for instance um yeah you're working um home and then you realize um probably taking you uh, one hour when you should be able to cut it down to 30 minutes so the hypothesis is what can you do to shorten the time or the distance from point a to point b um then from that hypothesis you derive the research topic um the structure of the power work is typically you have your introduction and um, the research topic you have your introduction then after the introduction you have your literature review now the literature review is the aspect whereby um you deal with um gathering of data so you want to talk about um um, um alcohol and its relation with, with pregnant women so you have to get data um several people have done different research work on that and um, clinical data on on, on different um patients or, or different scenarios on how that has affected pregnant women so with that um that comes to an analyzing aspect of, of the research work whereby you put a and b and c and d together and if a and b um are running together like is there any similarity that's when it comes to the significance you hear things like um the research paper is um, significant, it, it's not significant. When it's significant, it means it, it um, um, proves the title of the research of which is um, um, the hypothesis. And in case you, you don't understand what I'm saying or you have any question, I can just drop it in the box, then I'll try to um, uh, rectify that or go back and, and answer that for, for you guys. So after the structure of the paper, um, the proposal. The proposal is the first thing you actually do um, before starting your research work proper. When it comes to um, an educational institution, or um, you are doing your master's or your PhD, or you are doing probably your your undergrad, and then you are trying to derive this thesis or trying to think of a thesis, you have to have a proposal. You can't just jump into doing your research work. So you have to have a proposal which has to be approved um, based on. Um, some of the things most institutions look into for approving a proposal is does the institution or the work environment or wherever you are doing the research have the facility, um, the manpower, or have the um, have the the supervisor capable of of taking you through that research work or or supervising you with that research work. So that's when the proposal comes in. Um, the first research work I did um, in my undergrad was. Um, was um at the first proposal i brought was because uh, i wanted to work on um hiv and AIDS at the time because it was like a big thing um that based on the lack of facilities and infrastructure i don't think that i was at the time in regarding um, um that field of research work that got declined so i had to pick the next best um, um topic which was reproductive system because i could get a supervisor for that so those are the things you need to consider when writing a proposal and those are the the reason why a proposal is, is one of the things that most institutions or, or most organizations ask for first um, before you go into the research proper proper. The literary review, as I spoke um, about earlier, is basically um, gathering of data um, to be able to have a, a grounded understanding of what you're about to get into. For instance, uh, you want to do your research paper on, on productive systems, uh, women reproductive systems. And how much do you know about the reproductive system? Uh, what we want to check the issues of alcohol and reproductive system. How much data do you have on on that um, um topic? Then gathering gathering all those data um helps you to be able to come with um a better understanding of the method of or the instrument um um the equipment um, um the patient the subject are using human subjects can you use um, um, animal subjects um, can you do properly computerized um, machine learning analysis to get the result out of the data so the 
authority gives you an idea of what you're you are, you are, you are going into. Then uh, for table research work is basically um, lab research work, which goes back to ethics. You need a lot of approval for that. Um, a good example was a research I worked on, which was the, the effect of um, pattern mechanical on male productive system. So um, you need to consider the, the time duration, because um, I use uh, the Wister rat, you need to consider the duration of when the Wister rat um, administering the drugs and stuff like that. If something is going to, if you are going to table research work, um, you have um, big towns. Um, when you are giving doses, you have your standard, um, your dosage and everything. Um, so table research work is basically uh, the lab, and now it's not in word for that, it's the lab research work whereby you go to the lab and, and conduct your research work and all. And then after you get your results, then you analyze it, then come to your conclusion um, and that, yeah. So um, analysis, there are different uh, applications that one can use for analysis. You have your SSPS and stuff like that, or any application you know for it. It's very easier for you to understand. Um, all you just need to do is input um, your your information, the data that you got from your literature, or the data that you got from your civil work and into the software, then it easily analyzes for you. Um, it tells you whether it's significant, not significant, and stuff like that. So we'll dive deeper into that when when I will come to that topic. Then discussion and conclusion. Now um and discussion is basically um, it, it's a longer form of the conclusion. Conclusion is usually paragraphs or something, probably five, ten, maximum ten words, whereby you, you summarize everything. Once someone looks at the conclusion, um, the person can have an idea of the outcome of the whole research paper. Um, then discussion is basically a more elaborate way of um, 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 explaining what you did in summary. Um, I just forgot something um, about abstract. Abstract is something that's part of um, the, the part of the structure of the research paper. Um, <clears throat> it's basically the combination of everything your introductory literature, uh, then your conclusions, and everything. So that once people read that, they can follow the whole thing. Just like okay, um, your research work is so long, maybe five, ten pages. Let me just have an idea of what. This whole research work is all about kind of a thing. Um, then um, the the last thing will be of uh, be having um, a short exam. It's probably like a quiz kind of a thing. Um, of just some questions, just like assess ourselves and um, see um, how far we go with the learning. Um, if there's any deficiency in any in any aspect, we can try to rectify and and help ourselves. So you can ask me. Send me a or something, and uh, then I can go by it with you to, to help clarify any any part that you don't understand. And then um, we'll be doing a paper work or probably 200 to 500 words. Um, now, for the paper work, um, it's not going to be an end thing in the sense that it's not going to be till the end of the whole research work that we're going to do the paper work. So, from today, um, we'll start from somewhere, and that's somewhere is um, getting a research topic as individuals. Um, so getting a research topic as individuals um, for the for for the for the um, topic today that we'll be doing. Then as we go um, down the course outline, then we'll keep adding to to every single thing we've learned and all. Um, do you have any questions for me? Does anyone have any questions? If I move forward. Okay. I'll take that as a no. So um, what research? Um, research is basically the gathering of data um, based on on a topic that we we've, we've um, um, brought up. And then using that data in getting an answer to a question. So the topic is more or less a question that I can So there's an issue. So what what can be the solution to that issue? So 
so the topic is, is a question, um, then every question needs an answer. So the answer is a solution to the question. So basically, that's the if there's any simple definition I can give to um, a research um, um, as as a team, it's basically a question that needs an answer, and that answer is a solution. So um, first of all post a question, so what's the question, then collect the data, then um, present an answer for that. Um, <clears throat> now, a good example is, um, uh, which most of us have, have done is, okay, um, probably we're in a new environment, we're in a new country, we're in a new state, and then we're looking for, okay, I, I'm used to an African, um, um, an African meal, and uh, where can I get the Afghan meal or the Afghan food? Um, you go on Google, you do your research on Google, and then check the rating of the place, and then you decide whether to go there to get the food and, and all. Basically, that's uh, if there's any data in philosophy um, research work, that's what research work um, is. We, we ask a question. Um, now, from from the image, um, the Afghan meal is a topic. Um, okay, I, um, where can I get an Afghan meal? Um, then Google is more like the resource to do the research um, to, to find what are the available restaurants around that um, offer that Afghan meal. Uh, that research. Uh, we come to a conclusion um, as a solution. Okay, um, this is the best Afghan restaurant that meets uh, my my needs. So that's what I'm going to go to. So yeah, the collection of data to answer a specific hypothesis. Um, another thing again, we need to, to know about research work is um, research work is a process. It's, it's not something that it's not something that you wake up overnight. And then it, um, it's not something you wake up overnight and then you, you get an answer to it. it, it it's a process that you have to under, undergo. Um, when I did my research, one, one thing um, one of um, my mentors taught me or told me was you need to understand the research you're going into in the sense that what's your end goal? So from your end goal, you can decide what you need to do. So you, you think retrospectively after knowing what your end goal is. So with that, it saves you time, it saves you money when you're doing your research because you know what the expected end goal is. I won't say the end goal because when you're doing research, it, it, you have a theory of what the answer should be from each sure you. So you are not conclusive that this is what the answer is going to be. Because if you already have the answer, then it defeats the purpose of going to research or doing the research in the first place and all. Um, yeah, our research is, is a question backed up with evidence. So when you come out with, with um, um, a research um, or publication, you have to back it up with evidence. And that's when it boils down to, to your literature review, how strong or how well or in depth have you done your literature review and all. In order to get a conclusive um, 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 conclusion or answer to the hypothesis or the thoughts of the research. Um, now, uh, this is another good example which will be able to relate this as um, medical um, students or medical professionals and all. Um, probably topic on um, women's health, um, probably, um, um, let's say, um, menopause or um, mostly, um, um, breast cancer. Now, um, one thing with research is it needs to be specific enough in the sense that it's not so broad, uh, whereby it, 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 it's so um, hard to get data on, or not hard to get data on, on them per se, but it's so broad that it, it's not streamlined enough to, to, to address a specific thing or a specific race or a specific um, 
issue. So for instance, um, you want to talk on, um, on breast cancer. And now you can see um, the effects of, effect of maybe um, smoking and breast cancer in the world. That topic is so broad enough because we have different countries, different trees. Um, being specific enough um, to say that, okay, um, effects of breast cancer in black um, and African uh, women living in Africa, being able to streamline the topic enough not to make it too simple to get an answer with. So it's it, 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 it's a question that needs beyond a one paragraph answer, but more of an in-depth answer to, to, to answer the question. So you, you get the research topic, um, and it has to be another research topic, something no one has, has, has done before, which would you have to do your research to find out that research that hasn't been done before. Um, how do you do this? You go to Google Scholar. Now, PubMed is one of it, but um, I like to refer people to Google Scholar for a start um, because it's it's more it's a bit straightforward thing. Um, you can get PubMed under Google Scholar. So you do your research. Okay, um, I have a topic on effects of alcohol on a female reproductive system, right? You go on Google Scholar, you type it in. Does anything relating to that exact topic pop up? If nothing relating to that exact topic pops up, then yeah, that's a good research topic if no one has done, done it before. Then, based on the material you get from Google Scholar, I can then combine it if you are going towards being just a literature review, um, a kind of research work, more of the paper research work, instead of table research work. Then, you can reduce then, um, several research work, then use that to come to your conclusion. I know. So finding a topic, uh, which is one of the hardest things, um, I don't know, maybe for some of us in this group that who have um, been have done research work before, probably that that maybe uh, an easy thing for you guys. But that's one one of the challenging things with with research work, finding a topic. Um, first of all, you have to pick a topic that interests you because you don't want to do a research work that you're supposed to take for three months or probably six months and then you're doing something you have little or no interest in um it, it trust me it, it, it can be miserable trying to do a research topic on on something you you don't have any atom of interest in um so you have to find a way of picking a topic that interests you at the same time considering the availability of supervisors who are um, specialists in that certain field and then the availability of um, um, infrastructure to help you with that research um, um, topic. Then the topic has to be a novel research topic. Um, what novel means, as I said previously, something no one has done before, which means you have to do an initial or pre research to check if the topic you have in mind has been done or hasn't been done before. Excuse me. Now, the research topic must have a usable data uh what i mean by usable data is you have to have um a collection of data available to sustain that research work now um this kind of um um goes towards literature review now if you are doing just this literature your paper research work yes you need a collection of data to be able to support um um your research work but you can't come to a conclusion on your research topic without Tons or evidence to prove why are assessing or or declining a research topic. Why is this significant or not significant at all? Maybe I think it's table research work. or you just need to basically get is the foundation literature review whereby you, you understand the foundation or the, the basic of what you're about to go into, and then your research um, um, results because becomes an uh, becomes the the thing you use in analyzing and going to your conclusion. Um, basically, with that, you are the sole owner of the whole thing um, in the sense that if you, for literal review, you didn't use people's pre existing um, um, researches to come to your conclusion, but rather you use people's research, previous research work to get the basics of what they are getting to or the possibility. Of what you're getting into, and then you use your own um, table research of complete conclusion. A good example was uh, the research work I did, uh, which was 
um, the effect of um, um, Pasi Americana, which is avocado. I don't know if most of us know what avocado is, the fruit in um, meal reproductive system. Now, during the literal review, I have seen people use it for female reproductive system, but I had not seen at the time anyone using it for the meal reproductive system. So, um, so the topic was a go ahead. Um, the literal review was basically how it affected the reproductive system. And, <clears throat> and then um, my standard medication was vitamin E. A lot of people have done research on vitamin E and how can E affected the reproductive system. So I was using something which had um, a different chemical composition, which is avocado, in order to see if I'm going to get the same result as the vitamin E. Um, done by previous um, researchers and um, see if we going to give a similar result in terms of the hormones, um, um, the effect on hormones, which was done by previous researchers on female productive system. So I was putting two different perspectives into one in order to, to make um, the research work. Um, in case it goes off the next 10 minutes, I'll probably um, log back in, uh, then we continue um, for the same new timer. Um, so, yeah, so that's how I tackled the research work I did. So, it was a novel topic in the sense that no one has done anything before, but the, the different parameters I took were things that people had worked on before. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> so, please, in case you have any question, um, you can just in the chat, and I'll try to answer that. Um, or you can just um, tell me if, if you prefer speaking, speaking it out so that everyone can learn from the question. Now, proper research topic, um, a good example is effect of alcohol in Asia. That's a very, very broad topic. Um, there are so many countries in Asia, um, different cultures, um, um, different diets and everything. So you can't take that broad topic because there are different um, um, circumstances and different um, situations in play in, in that situation that to boil it down to the effect of alcohol during pregnancy in South Korean women. It, it, it's boiling it down to a specific country, specific with a specific situation, which is the pregnancy and all. Um, that's one thing we'll, we'll, we'll work on. It. At first, it's not straightforward. Um, that as you guys come with your research topic and then go through it and uh, we make the editing and correcting. Basically, research is an experience, learning from experience and all. Now, um, this is simplified um, timeline for research. Um, um, this is simplified timeline for, for research. Um, Let me go back. Okay, this is the five timeline for research. Um, now, um, first of all, you need to get the research topic after the proposal and everything. The next big thing is getting the, the research topic. Uh, once you get the research topic, then you need to get literature reviews and, and, and paperwork that have been done previously to back that research topic. Um, then, after that, if you are going to a table work, research um, setting, then you get your um, your your table work going. Then after that, uh, once you get your table table work um experiment or lab work experiment um sorted out, then you analyze the data. You either go from the literature paper work you, you sorted out or the lab work you did. Then for example, the conclusion. This is a very simple way of of in research. Um, we have to go for that. We'll kind of go into the complex form um, over the week. Now, basic characteristics of a good research question. Um, specificity, um, complexity, and how accurate is, is the research topic. Um, now, there's a limit to, to the number of words, which is funny, but yeah, there's a limit to the number of words for a proper um, um, educational um, setting research work to be done. Um, it shouldn't be too long, it should be too short. Um, it, 
it yeah, shouldn't be too long. Then that should be too short when when you're trying to formulate your your research topic and all. Uh, then the complexity, the research work shouldn't be too complex. When when I mean complex, it's broad in the sense that it, it's touching so many things at the same time. Um, those so many things can be broken down into different research papers or research work or research topic. Um, but at the same time, it should be it should be good enough that the research topic cannot be answered within one paragraph or within um, 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 one sentence. It should be something that requires you to go in depth into the research work in order to, to get an answer or a solution to the work. And answerability is basically whatever research work you are doing should, should be able to have an answer um, for it. Um, um, yeah. So it should be answerable. It should have a solution, not not a solution that you have it. Based on your literature, you should have a predicted um, um, and hypothesized or theoretical solution to the question. Now, background research, um, what are the materials you can use for background research, which is literature review and stuff like that? Uh, one of the things I advise most starters to use is your Google Scholar, because that gives you have, uh, so many tons of information um, um, vetted by journals um, and all, and probably it's, it's Another um, phone whereby you can get um, your your literature reviews and um, information to get back to the textbook. Um, then you can, if you can get your hands on paper journals or textbooks. Um, and when you're using textbooks, um, you should try as much as possible to use the recent um, form of textbook. Um, for instance, if there's a twenty twenty edition, preferably using that rather than using probably the twenty thirteen edition and all. When, when doing research work, um, because um, there's a timeline when doing research work, which um, depending on the country or the institution, that most time it's, it's five years or maybe seven years. You shouldn't get um, reference for your research work that's um, um, beyond five years. So, for instance, when 2020, so if you are seeking a reference, it shouldn't be 2007. That's way back, except your there are some. Instance whereby you need that, um, probably those instances you can refer back to a uh, very old um, um, literature review, but preferably try as much as possible to stick within the five year range when doing your research work. Um, now, to sum everything up um, about introduction to research, um, getting a research topic. Um, Make sure the research topic is a novel research topic, um, which means no one has ever used or ever done anything specifically to that topic. Uh, probably people might have done things relating to that topic that not specific to your research topic. The exact topic you use shouldn't be um, seen anywhere else. And um, secondly, it should be specific. Um, don't be too broad when getting your research work. It should be specific to a certain way, a certain situation, a certain problem that needs a solution. Um, but at the same time, it should be complex enough in the sense that it, it just don't answer it with just one sentence or one paragraph. There should be something that needs a lot of um, information to review. Probably takes maybe 10,000 words. Um, it depends on, on the publishing company or journal uh, marketing research. So there should be something. Um, not broad, but at the same time, um, not too simple. That someone can just go on Google and just get an answer for. Um, and should be something you are able to collect enough information and data or evidence to support um, the conclusion or the answer you bring out at the end of the day. So um, after today, um, the assignment that will probably start with, to build on, on our research and everything, um, uh, research course of uh, this class is to try and come up with a research topic. Um, probably after this class, I'll uh, probably put my email out there so that, um, or the group chat, I'll put in the group chat or something, whereby you come with a research topic, um, send it to me, then um, we go through it, um, and then we'll make um, the addition or the changes, and then get back to you with the feedback, why certain things were changed, uh, why certain things shouldn't be the way they are. Uh, then from here, uh, we can gradually start building on our uh, um, skills, uh, knowledge, or research work um, for those of us who are already done research before, build 
hold on that. So that's um, the assignment for today. Um, so probably the next time we meet, if you probably start the next week, depending on what conflict, then can um, it, I think if it's possible to send it within within three three days, then we can um, then I can put, look on it, uh, then um, get back to you guys um, with the feedback on the topic. Then from there we can start. Doing the restore review and building on the um, um, set topic. Um, then um, the research team um, presently uh, right now consists of um, myself and Dr. Esther Olumi. Uh, I hope I didn't put her the name uh, for that. Um, so, but, yeah, hello. Good day. Um, yeah, good day. Okay. When is the assignment due? Um, lots of the next three days. Um, if we'll be meeting um, every 